Just like minivans replaced station wagons and SUVs replaced minivans, crossovers have begun to take over as the utility vehicle du jour. And with increasing success comes increasing segmentation, meaning ever smaller crossovers, basically hatchbacks on lift kits, have begun to gain ground. Now, Mazda proved with the CX-5 that crossovers could be pretty fun to drive, too. So the smaller CX-3 comes to the table with that driving pedigree, optional all-wheel drive, and a bit of added ride height over the global Mazda 2 platform that it's based on. How does it look? To put it bluntly, I think the CX-3 looks great. Mazda designers have been hitting visual home runs for the last few years, and they work on this pint-sized utility vehicle is no exception. Flowing bodywork and wheels at the corners proportions work well, and I don't mind the lifted stance here. Compare this Mazda with competitors Honda HRV and Chevy Trax, for instance, and I think you'll see which is the real beauty. How's the storage? Look under the hatch and you'll find enough room for one big suitcase, a couple of standard size carry-on bags, or quite a few groceries. It's pretty good. But when you look at the numbers, the CX-3 actually has less space than most of the competitors, and it even has less space than Mazda's own Mazda 3 hatchback. Mazda hasn't added any more storage to the CX-3 than you'd find in your average subcompact. The two cup holders can be hard to get at thanks to the fold-down center armrest, and the pockets in the doors are only about average in size. One surprising feature that I really do dig is the slot-shaped phone holder which secures your device in a place that allows for cable access to USB ports, but without the distracting screen in your peripheral view. Is it roomy? In the front seats, two adults of normal size, don't forget I'm six foot five inches tall, should find more than enough room to live. Even at my height, with a seat at its lowest setting, I don't feel cramped. The rear seats are compromised in the same way you'd expect from any subcompact, meaning not very usable for adults. How does the interior feel? From the perspective of the driver, the interior design is really nice. Uh, the seats obviously look sporty and they feel pretty sporty too, pretty aggressive bolstering, and the steering wheel is pretty chunky and, and falls nicely to hand. At this price point, you're gonna find a lot of plastics in any vehicle, and the CX-3 has its share of hard plastic. But I think Mazda designers have done a really good job of incorporating leather in this cabin. Where my elbows, knees, and hands fall are typically soft, and the material quality and variety is good. Is it well equipped? 18-inch wheels call out the higher spec from the outside, as do the LED headlights. This car also has the powered moonroof, a push-button start, a 7-speaker Bose sound system, and navigation via a 7-inch touchscreen. How's the infotainment system? This Mazda system is pretty good. It allows for users to choose between touchscreen controls or the central control knob next to the shift lever. I don't find that rotary knob particularly fast as a system navigation tool, but I guess it's nice to have the option at least for those who prefer a physical control. Is it a good daily driver? Yeah, I think the CX-3 is actually a really good daily driver, partially because it's so versatile. When you're in town, you know, in an urban environment, the car is pretty easy to get into and out of parking spaces, maneuver parking lots, and generally feels like the right size. On the highway or as a commuter car, it's not quite as good. There's still plenty of creature comforts around here to keep commuters happy, but the ride gets a bit choppier on stretches of highway uh, that aren't perfectly smooth and there's a lot of wind noise that comes off these big mirrors too. So, will you get used to it? Probably. Is it ideal? Not exactly. Is it fun to drive? Anyone who's driven other Mazda products won't be surprised to hear that, yeah, the CX-3 is really fun to drive. Uh, they've done the small crossover thing really well and maintain kind of the DNA that makes Mazda products usually really enjoyable. The steering is really direct, it's got some feel to it, feels good when you're throwing it into a corner, and the suspension doesn't let you down either. It's not wallowy or soft. There's a little bit more compliance in it than there might be in a Mazda 3, for instance, but not so much that you won't enjoy yourself on a good back road. So under the hood, Mazda has a 2-liter Skyactiv 4-cylinder engine making 146 horsepower and 146 pound-feet of torque. That's not enough to make the car feel fast, but it does feel pretty lively, and you can shift through the six ratios on the automatic transmission on the paddle shifters to have a little bit more fun. How's the fuel economy? 
When you compare the ratings strictly in this class, the CX-3's 27 city and 32 highway mile per gallon ratings are right in line with the best. The added weight and the all-wheel drive system take their toll though. You can find front drive crossovers and similarly sized hatchbacks that do much better in terms of fuel economy. How much is it? The version you see here would retail for more than $27,000, where basic front drive versions start just under $22,000. Overall, Mazda pricing is just a little higher, trim for trim, than that of segment competitors. Call it the zoom zoom tax. What are the negatives? Overall, this is a really balanced vehicle. It makes a lot of sense, especially if you prize all-wheel drive but want a smaller footprint. But it's also more expensive than competitors in the segment. And it's a few grand more and not quite as useful as that Mazda 3 hatchback I keep bringing up. Still. If you like the look, the body cladding, and the ride height, I'm not going to stand in your way. It's just not a totally rational segment to begin with. Who should buy it? I think that Mazda is basically going after the Subaru demographic here. People that are outdoorsy and active, who want a hatchback with a dash of ruggedness, but probably don't need a traditional SUV. Also, anybody who's shopping for a crossover already, but prioritizes enthusiastic driving, should definitely take a look at Mazda. If you guys dug this video, like it, subscribe it. <laughs> nope. If you guys dug this video, like it, comment on it, and subscribe to our channel because we're going to have a lot more.